the morning retail reconfigurations and finance fluctuations navigating today's business landscape. We're going to discover how Rite Aid, Stitch Fix, and Big Lot, some of these big box names are adapting to challenges and the shift in small business loan trends that we're seeing across the board. Also, we're going to tackle the unexpected surge in mid-sized business earnings as we're kind of transversing through this earnings season in Q4. The middle market is uh, really starting to pop off and you know you've seen some big tech gains as well so this week in trade first we're going to talk about ride aids financial struggles then dive into stitch fixes strategic shift the third one big banks and small business loans fourth mid-size business earnings and five big lots aggressive sales strategy right here to kick things off we'll talk about ride aid who's been in trouble but here's what you need to know here's some quick facts i'm going to make real simple Rite Aid is it's a big drugstore. It's kind of like Walgreens for a lot of people. It's having money problems and it has to make some changes. They've lost a lot of money because of slower sales and some legal issues, the opioid crisis. They plan to close some of the stores that aren't doing as well. Jeffrey Stein is their new CEO and is here to help fix things. Stores like Amazon and Walmart, they're making it really tough for Rite Aid because they sell similar stuff and a lot of times a lot cheaper. Now, there's that legal trouble I mentioned. They had a lot of opioid issues selling pain medicine. They said they didn't do anything wrong. We know that it's a, a ripple effect that's going to happen for years and years as we unwind that crisis that we, that we continue to experience today. And, but this is what everyone's not talking about. This bankruptcy is it's different, and it showed up with little or no warning signs officially from the accounting side. Now, I know that people are arguing that it's been declining for a long time and you should have expected it decades ago that Rite Aid would go out of business. But suppliers are in a tough spot because they were really rely on accounting indicating a going concern. It, it, it basically just means that they're having a hard time with validating whether or not they're going to be able to stay liquid, stay in business, keep profits up. And so I want to know what your thoughts are. How do you feel about stores like Rite Aid having these major problems when it comes to major social issues like an opioid crisis? And do you think they can bounce back from that? Or is it something that's going to be a, a 10 million pound anchor that just drags them down over and over again, month after month until oblivion? So there's the first part. Our second topic here is an important shift in retail. Stitch Fix has adjusted to the changing times in the retail market. So let's unpack that a little bit. There's a big shift happening over at Stitch Fix. It's the uh, company where you would go online and describe your style and it would provide a service of sending you clothes that would fit what your you know aesthetic was. So uh, they're saying goodbye to that Dallas distribution center in Texas and it's you know they're laying off over 500 people. And it's going to be happening over the course of the first quarter in 2024. Uh, they're also closing another spot in Pennsylvania, and that's impacting another additional almost 400 jobs. These are tough times for these employees for a company that had huge valuations before. I mean, it's supposed to be made of money, right? And so let's, let's dig a, like one layer deeper into that. Here's a silver lining. Stitch Fix is building up their teams in Atlanta, Indianapolis, Phoenix. Very interesting coming out of Texas and into Georgia, Indiana, Arizona, establishing more roles. Now, like I mentioned, we're talking about 800, 900 jobs going away, and they're going to replace it with 200 roles. So you've got to really look at the numbers for these headlines to really make sure that it's actually providing any real value to these employees. But for those affected by the layoffs, there's a chance that they could move to one of these other job markets. But who wants to move? from Texas to next door to Arizona, where they're going to have to pay additional taxes. Are they going to offset that? There's a lot of things that they're going to have to consider. And so my question for you is, if you're in the apparel industry, I've got a lot of clients that sell into Stitch Fix. Are those big shifts in retail warning signs of more trouble to come? Or do you think this is just shoring up the ship for uh, potential growth in 2024? Let me know. The third topic Ever wonder why big banks might be turning you down for a small business loan? This is for all my small business owners out there, all my uh, small business kings. The answer, it might surprise you. In recent months, we've seen a trend. Big banks are becoming less likely to approve small business loans. As of September, the approval rate has dipped 13.1%, making consistent decline since middle of 2022. What's causing all this shift? in small business loans. According to the CEO of Biz2Credit, which is actually a pretty big lender, uh, a lot of big banks seem to be evolving 
and many are cutting costs, closing branches, and favoring larger deals over small business loans. Let me boil it down for you. They're uh, getting rid of risk. They're offloading things that any loans that they may uh, not see as a sure thing, and they're transitioning to larger deals. I mean, who wouldn't want to transit larger deals? Lower the risk profile for their, you know, it, it, anything after a Silicon Valley bank, it, anything from that point onward is just decrease risk and try to increase deposits at all costs. If you ask any banker, that's what that's what the story of the year has been. But here's a silver lining. Other lenders are stepping up. I've talked to a lot of smaller lenders, private lenders, and they are really intersecting into especially small and middle market businesses and trying to bring in these loans, especially at a time interest rates are so high, it's really hard to refinance any of these loans. But if you're a small business trying to get into the lending space, then the smaller, more private lenders are where it's happening. Regional and community banks have increased their approval rates up to 19.3% as of September. And so we've seen a huge increase more than offsetting the decrease in the big banks. So you used to, you're used to going to your Chase bank and getting a business loan, just like you would a checking account or a credit card. And all of a sudden they'll take your money, but they won't lend you anything because you're a small business owner. Well, regional banks, community banks, they're the ones that are stepping up and making sure that small businesses thrive. Now, remember most of America's economy and businesses are small and middle market businesses, the vast majority. And just because big banks are catering to big businesses just to offset their risk doesn't mean that the entire economy needs to grind to a halt. And I'm really glad regional and community banks are willing to take on some of that risk and finance some of those loans to make sure that businesses stay in play. Institutional investors and alternative lenders saw slight upticks in their approval rates. We're talking about private equity and alternative lenders, there's a lot of interesting direct loan kind of operations out there. Alternative lenders are leading the, repa- the pack at a robust 30% increase. Why? These lenders, especially smaller banks, are embracing digital tools and government-backed SBA loans, which mitigate the risk. I know I've got a lot of SBA people out there that follow this content and are interested in what's going on in the marketplace. SBA loans are increasing, especially as they are you know, backed and, again, offsetting that risk. So this is a good opportunity to offset the risk and still be able to keep businesses active. So for small businesses seeking funding, it's not just about the cost of capital. My opinion, speed, convenience, and higher cadence of approval matter just as much, if not more, if not more for seeking funding. And let's, in a time of liquidity crunches, let's not punish small businesses just for being on the cutting edge of something. Let's make sure that we're increasing lending activity to keep the economy in a healthy position and not force ourselves into recession. So let's talk. Are you a small business owner and you're looking for financing or you're trying to navigate this crazy waters? You went to your Chase Bank and they said no, but you don't know where else to go. Don't get disheartened by all those big bank decisions and look at all these options. Some of the ones I talked about, again, regional community banks, private lending. Where one door closes, it might just mean another one swinging wide open for you. Here's the next topic. Did you know that mid-sized businesses made more money this year? So we talked about small businesses. Now let's transition into mid-sized businesses. They made a lot more. Here's some quick facts. Earnings went up by 13% in just a few months. Money coming in, that's revenue for businesses, grew by 8%. Tech businesses did the best. Not shocked here, especially with this AI boom. And so uh, here's a leader from Gold Capital who said, even with things like high gas prices, businesses, they're doing great. And Dr. Altman also said that tech businesses are doing really well because they help out other companies and doing their work better. And so this is where I'm seeing where, where's the money flowing? The money is flowing towards businesses that are helping others achieve. And it's kind of like, you know, the, the way I think about taxes, I just said, in a uh, in an ACGS Association for Corporate Growth meeting, and listened to a lecture by Dr. Art Laffer, who you know honestly, you know he I, I consider me a convert. I think that his what he said was amazing and, and inspiring, and it's very eye opening. All the facts and stuff. So I will definitely be picking up his book. But as you look at you know how taxes impact income on a person to person basis, it's very similar when you look at you know how any sort of investment in tools or companies or resources that's going to help your company make more money. It's kind of like the inverse is true. Taxes are going to suppress income, whereas 
AI is going to increase profitability and revenue because you're going to be able to produce more and more efficiently. It may sound simple and make sense, but it's an easy bet to make in today's economy where there's a lot of risk out there and there's a lot of uncertainty in things like, you know, home improvement stores, retail stores, home furnishing stores, those kind of things, metals, chemicals, hardwoods, all these kind of commodity based pricing markets are kind of in a in a tenuous place right now and what we want to be seeing is investments in utilities like ai and i consider ai and search in the internet a utility and uh, investment in those utilities that is going to spur more growth and more development on a macro scale and so we're, we're seeing a lot of the money flow that way and i do think that over the next three to five to ten years we're going to see a lot of the benefits from that as we kind of come out of it's been about 25 years we've had Every 25 years, we have the dawn of computers, dawn of internet, and here we are with the dawn of AI. And I really do find that tech, tech businesses are thriving and, and a lot of these startups are thriving in this year uh, because of those prospective growth in the future. So here's the final story. We're talking about big lots. Got a lot of fans of big lots in my family coming into the holidays. You've got, you know, not Hobby Lobby, but also Hobby Lobby. But these big stores, these big box stores, are really pushing for a turnaround this quarter. So let's talk about Bidlocks specifically and their big play in the fourth quarter of this year. Let's talk about savings. Retailers, like I mentioned, are pushing for inventory to get out the door and they're promoting sales like they never have before. For example, Big Lots is having Black Friday sales all month long. And this isn't an ad for Big Lots, but this is just looking into a business strategy practice that a lot of retail is trying to engage in. They're not doing it out of generosity they're not doing it out of the good graces of their heart here's the real deal here's the scoop big lots needs a winning holiday season more than ever with a rough patch in their sales and closing some of the distribution centers to cut costs they're passing on the saving spirit to their customers and hoping that it keeps them out of the grave so my question for you is are you selling into big lots or other big box retailers retailers are you uh a business owner who is maybe manufacturing goods or distributing goods and you're finding yourself, you know, questioning, you know, why is Big Lots paying me a little slower? Why is at home store paying me a little slower? Why is QVC paying me a little slower? We've got a lot of those answers. I That's what I do is I dig deep into the credibility of your customers and help provide a backstop in case there's a failure to pay. My whole goal is to ensure you and your business gets paid through a variety of means. If you have any cyber risk collections or credit concerns, then that's where I step in. But do you think that Big Lots is going to be able to make up their sales and their losses with discounts and marketing schemes this quarter? Or do you think this is just kicking the can further down the road? I want to know how you feel about Big Lots and their success to value ratio as it comes into and out of the fourth quarter this year. How's it going to look a year from now? Do you think they'll be better than ever? Or do you think there's going to be a lot of liquidation sales in their future? Thanks for listening to this quick rundown of what's happening in trade over the past week. If you're interested in what's happening next week, check out my newsletter. You can find a link and any kind of information, no matter where you're listening it to. Please feel free to like, follow, subscribe, and share this content because I think it could be very helpful for you in the future. And if you have any feedback, please let me know in the comments or you can find anything in my information, dfbradley.com.